Human beings across the world fall into two distinct categories. One set is dynamic, progressive, prosperous. Another set is peaceful, content, happy. Now, if you analyze the world, you find these two distinct categories of people. Now, what's strange about this, these differences is those who are progressive, prosperous, dynamic, advancing in their lives, you find are not necessarily happy. On the other hand, the peaceful lot, the content lot, the happy lot are not necessarily progressive. So we have come to accept this as a way of life. That is, if you are engaged in activity, if you're a successful person, if you're in the midst of action, you are bound to face stress and strain, worry and anxiety. And if you want to be happy, peaceful, content, you need to get away from it all and find peace. So this has been a way of looking at life. Now the question is, can we have such a thing as dynamic tranquility or a tranquil dynamism? Is that a myth or is that possible? We go back in time. Nearly 5,000 years ago, a great thinker put together a science, a philosophy of life in a wonderful text, the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is a part of a greater epic, greater Indian epic called the Mahabharata. And we are told the great sage Vyasa wrote this epic and brought to humanity a philosophy that is good for all times. What is unique about the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita is that it stands the test of time. Though written a long time ago, it is as relevant to us today as it was then and will continue to be relevant in the future. This is because the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita deals with eternal values of life, referred to in Sanskrit, the Indian language, as Sanatana Dharma. Now these eternal principles do not change with time or age. Just as a science is a digest of many great thinkers, with reference to a particular subject, so also is this philosophy that forms the sap of this text, the Bhagavad Gita. And this philosophy is called Vedanta. Vedanta simply talks about life and living. While the rest of the world and the great thinkers of the world have promoted almost every area of knowledge in this world, every subject possibly conceived pertaining to the world, there has been little or no reference whatsoever to the human, the individual, you, me. Who am I? Who are you? We are talking about the human being. Now, why is this important is because why we, we could all understand and appreciate that the world has advanced phenomenon 
standard of living has risen from nothing, simple living, to very complex, sophisticated life. All this has happened because of science and the various areas of science that has been developed over painstaking hard work that the thinkers of the world have put together. And the world today is a beautiful place to live in with a lot of amenities and facilities. But in spite of all this advancement, all intended to make human life better and better, you find the paradox is a human is not happy. In fact, problems seem to mount. The more advanced we are in our standard of living, the more complex are our problems. And we need to examine why this is happening. So we come down to the human, the individual who has been neglected. Now here is a subject that is bringing it all back to us, explaining to us what a human being is constituted of and how do we make ourselves better beings so that we can coexist in this world happily within ourselves and in relation with others. So the human is constituted of certain equipments now here is a text that works like an instructions manual. So when you buy a new gadget and you want to use it, you look for an instructions manual. And the manual tells you all about the gadget that you have just bought, how to use it, how to bring it to its optimum, how not to misuse it, and how to keep it in good repair so that it can serve you for as long as it can. So also is this manual, the Bhagavad Gita, that introduces yourself to yourself. With this knowledge of oneself, you could find a way by which you can better yourself, make yourself a happier person, and at the same time be productive, efficient, dynamic, in the world. And as you set an example, you will find that you spread the good word around and so we can have a society, a community, a nation, a world of better humans. Humans that are happier and more dynamic. The magnificent philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita translates itself into practical living, particularly with reference to our social, official, domestic lives. It addresses itself to what we face in life, the challenges we face in life, as a result of which we might experience stress and strain, worry and anxiety. It also helps us deal with relationships. In life, it doesn't matter what you meet, but it matters how you meet it. Here is a philosophy that helps us to take on the challenges of the world like a sportsman takes to sport. He understands one time the world gets the better of him, and another time he gets the better of the world, but in a spirit of sportsmanship. So nothing in the world can weigh you down. Nothing in the world would make you lose your, your balance. And thus you find a complete life, a full life, a wholesome life. And finally, the Bhagavad Gita brings to us a knowledge way beyond just finding peace and dynamism. It tells us the very truth, the essence of human life, which is the discovery of one's own self. What is your real nature? 
what is the truths of life? Is there something to be known in life that we do not know of today? And is that the purpose of human life? All these questions and much more are answered in the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita.